everybody and welcome to a very special episode on the Engine Gremlin channel. Today I am here with Jeff Setzer of In The Image, uh, a local business here in Colorado, specifically in Denver. Um, so In The Image did the scan of the 2JZ head that we got our hands on and uh, we're going to be going over not only the scan that they did but the technology that they use. Um, so Jeff, first of all, thank you very much for taking on this job. I know this is a pretty complicated piece to scan. Um, so. You know, tell us a little bit about in the, in the image, some of the services that you guys okay. uh, provide. Uh, we started a couple of years ago, about 10 years ago. Um, we started as uh, my boys was interested in robotics. So um, what we ended up doing was we built a CNC scanner, uh, CNC uh, router. And from that, we purchased a um, a laser. A laser. Uh, CO2 laser, and from that, um, with the C CNC router, I was always looking for jobs, and came up alongside a company that did vacuum forming for uh, a product, and I bought a scanner because they needed 3D images, and that's how I got into the scanner. So, All right, cool. Um, we do a little bit of everything on that. Awesome, love it. Well, uh, we're also a big fan of supporting local business here at the Engineering Channel. Uh, so should we break it down and see how everything works and sure. do some scanning? Sure. All right, cool. So I want to take a few minutes here to talk more about 3D scanning. So what is 3D scanning and how does it work? Well, for starters, there are many different types of 3D scanning, such as structured light scanning, laser scanning, blue light scanning, uh, algorithm-based image correlation, radiographic scanning, such as CT scanning, and, and so on. And each have their pros and cons uh, and various price points depending on the level of accuracy that you're wishing to obtain. Now, the method that we used in this video is a form of laser scanning. Now, for laser scanning, the basis of the technology revolves around a camera laser pair. The laser shoots a straight line, and the camera, for a perfectly flat surface, is expecting to see a perfectly straight line. Now, when the laser hits an object that isn't perfectly flat, it deforms the line that the camera sees. The software then takes that image data and compares it to what it sees to what it should see. The missile knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. And uses vector math and geometry to determine the physical surface of the object it's scanning. It then creates point cloud data to visually represent that data in the scanning program. In order to keep track of where it is in relation to where it's scanning though, we apply black and white circular stickers that the software is designed to recognize via the camera. The software notes these points in relation to each other and is constantly cross-referencing this macro grid structure to triangulate and orient itself and the data in real time. Now this same function allows a user to scan one section, stop, and then move to the next section without having to scan the entire object all in one go. Um, now this all happens tens, hundreds, or even thousands of times a second depending on the frequency of the scanning and the desired level of accuracy. Slower frequencies are going to have less fidelity in the scan data, but they're much faster and easier to process, while faster frequencies provide much higher quality scans at the expense of large file sizes and slower processing speeds. Now, the typical scanning frequency is around 60 hertz by default for most scanners, and this can be adjusted up or down, usually. It depends on the quality of the scanner that you have. Now, to further increase the accuracy of the scan, adding additional lasers, as well as orienting them 90 degrees from each other, so like this, uh, to create a grid pattern, it's, it's better able to identify or see the surface. Now, depending on the scanner and the software used, surface patching and feature cleanup can be used to create a watertight solid model afterwards, as well as remove any discrepancy in the scan data and optimize the model so that you're not applying, you know, resources computationally to areas where it doesn't matter, like flat surfaces, and not applying them where they do matter, like really complex curves. And we're going to go over that here a little bit later after uh, Jeff has gone through the scan. Okay. Uh, so I use a commercial scanner. It's a, a Creoform Handy Scan 700. Um, and basically, on the Creoforms, they use a, a target. That's what all the dots are all on, on the, the product here or the head. Um, as this is turned on, I believe there's seven uh, 
lights or lasers Laser. that, that pick up these targets and the surface of the part. And you'll see it when I do it, it'll start imaging it on the, the screen. So this also, you, you have to be within a specific distance from it. Yep. And there's a light on here that tells me um, if I'm too far or too far, too close to it. Yeah. So pretty normal for laser based stuff. Usually what happens is you've got kind of a spread with the lasers and they have a, you get too close and it's not, you don't have a wide enough spread that it works very good. You get too far away, the spread's too far and it can't pick up the detail. There we go. Oh, very cool. I really hope the grid that it's projecting shows up in the video. Right now I'm shooting at 60 Hertz, which is typically the same <laughs> frequency that scanning happens at. So hopefully it's not coming in as like a flashing grid and it's able to be there. If not, oh well, <laughs> I can't shoot higher than 60 frames per second unless I go into super slow mode. <laughs> And basically you do it like a, uh, you spray painting, just go back and forth at different angles. Now, obviously it's something I think we kind of left out that the, that the, uh, uh, I, I don't know how to, the reflectivity or shininess of the yeah. surface makes a big difference here. Now you may notice that for this head, we've gone entirely and primered this entire head to give it this matte gray, which is kind of the ideal surface color and, and, uh, reflectivity. It's not so shiny that the laser bounces right off and can't pick it up, but it's not so dark that it can't see, you know, all of the surface details. So the matte finishes, it picks up really well. Um, uh, some of the other products I use, I have to use a evaporating spray mm -hmm. that's white and you spray it on like a spray paint. Yep. And then what happens is it takes about three or four hours and it, and it evaporates. So you can't even tell it's there. I've seen some videos where they've sprayed like a, a high-end camera, scanned it, and then what they do is show you a time lapse of it evaporating. Okay. And they, it's very cool. That sounds, so, that does sound very cool. So once the scan is completed, it's time to clean up the model. And the first thing that needs to happen is we need to remove the background data that gets captured in the scan, which is basically the surface that the model is resting on. Once the background data has been removed, then it's time to align the different sections of scans that were taken so that they're all oriented in the same axis and on top of each other so that they mesh congruently. This is done by selecting planar surfaces in both sets of scans and then using those planar surfaces to match each other. Essentially, you're creating local XYZ coordinates. Once the scans have been oriented with respect to themselves, it's time to orient the model with respect to the global coordinate system. This is done the same way as orienting the scans to each other was done, whereby you're creating planes by selecting data points on certain flat surfaces and using those as your X, Y, and Z planes respectively. Now, once the separate scans have been properly meshed together and then oriented with respect to the global coordinate system, it's now time to create entities within the model. Now, entities are probing the model or the scan data in order to generate perfect surfaces such as cylinders, squares, cones, planes, etc. that can then be translated or imported into the model later when cleaning up the model so that instead of getting a, you know, uneven tet mesh that is has some disparaging points you get nice perfect surfaces throughout the entire model this model uses approximately 250 entities in total now with all the entities completed you can see here that there are still holes within the mesh and we want to generate a watertight model so the next step is to fill the holes now fortunately the software here is very adept at doing that now, once all the holes have been filled, again, it is a watertight model, which means that you can fill it. It becomes a total solid instead of a shell model. Now, once you have a totally solid model, it becomes much easier then to start 
taking away geometry, adding geometry back in in a separate CAD program, things that you want to change in order to modify your model for whatever purposes. Now that there's a water type model, we're going to be transferring the entities out of this program and then into SOLIDWORKS for reference later. The entities are separate from the mesh file here so that we can reference them easier in the future, as well as use them to say add or subtract or modify within the CAD program. Now what you see here is the finalized product of all of this work, the scanning, the model cleanup, everything. So this is the fully completed TET mesh uh, that we are going to be using as the basis of the model in order to make the new cylinder head for the Ford 200. All right, Jeff, thank you very much for walking us through that process. This is a very, very cool technology. Uh, and personally, I can't wait to start diving into the model and playing and tinkering uh, as I am want to do uh, and start designing the head for the Ford 200 uh, based off of this 2JZ. But again, thank you so much for walking us through this. Uh, if folks in the Denver area, even outside of the Denver area, want to, you know, contact you guys for your service or services, how, how can they do that? How they can they get um, I think you have my card. You can add that to your links. I definitely do that. Um, uh, my email is uh, in the image cnc at yahoo.com. Um, and then we also have a Facebook page. I believe it's Sets for Fam. I'll be sure to put links to both of those down in the description of the video. So if you guys definitely want to take advantage of services that in the image has available to offer, please feel free to reach out to those guys. Uh, I'm extremely happy with the work that you guys have done. Thank it's you. been great. Uh, great opportunity for myself in terms of uh, getting this head scan. I can't wait to get into it. So, and I've enjoyed working with you guys. Uh, so, I think that's going to close out the episode. Again, thank you guys so much. And we will see you guys next time, uh, hopefully, with more updates on the cylinder head development. Mm -hmm.